Hello, I'm Super Duper Gamer, and today I'm playing Renegade by Richard Wilkins and published by Victory Point Games. Now, Richard Wilkins is actually a very um, active and popular solo gamer. Uh, you may have heard of him. He goes by Ricky Royal. Uh, so when I heard he was designing his own solo game, I was very excited to get my hands on it. I backed on Kickstarter right away, and here it is. All right, so this is set up as a one to five player cooperative game, which I'll of course be playing solo. So in Renegade, the world has been sort of taken over by these supermassive computers. These supermassive computers have figured out how to sort of control the minds of the population, and this has resulted in things such as an end to crime and an end to poverty. However, it's also resulted in an end to free will and an end to human emotion. So in this game, we'll be taking control of a fringe society um, people known as renegades, who have the goal of hacking into these supermassive computers and bringing them down to restore humanity to the world. Let's play. All right, let's identify everything we've got on the table here before we start playing. Um, over here, these are the, the tokens. Now, the renegades will be deploying these colored ones, and the SMSC will be t deploying these black and white ones. The colored circles are known as contaminants. Um, so we'll be putting those out on the on the board here, and when we get enough to upgrade them to an installation, that's when we'll replace them with these colored squares. They all provide a different benefit for you in your fight against the SMC. The SMC is going to be deploying these black circles known as sparks, and when they get enough of those, they'll deploy some guardians with sort of these black squares. So the renegades will be moving around the network, trying to get rid of these sparks before they become guardians. The only losing condition in the game is if the SMC needs to deploy another spark or guardian and there aren't any more available to deploy. So that's why you need to get them off the map when you see them. Uh, Alright, so the map is you know a, different, a bunch of different colored hexes. Each hex is known as a partition, each color is known as a server, and the whole thing together is known as a network. It's really important to get that terminology right and to keep it straight. So, you know, there's six partitions make a server, and all five servers make a network. So you need to keep that in mind. Here we've got our avatar. We're playing as Tilda Sweet, here's our character sheet, and so your renegade will be represented in the network at a certain location with your avatar. And then the game starts with through setup to have uh, some contaminants and sparks already out here in the network. Here we've got our SMC card. So this is the supermassive computer we'll be playing against for this game. Actually, this is not a supermassive computer. This is the training simulator. So it's the first one that they recommend playing against. And then the game comes with harder ones that you can do later. But for one game, you only play against one SMC. And that SMC will have bronze, silver, and gold countermeasures. And those will be... Uh, down here, here's our countermeasure card. Again, these are just specific to the training simulator, so they'll be more detailed and more difficult when you play the full game. All right, our character sheet's got a key code here, which gives us the terminology for all the different con contaminants, installations, commands, and servers. Um, there's a lot of words in this game, a lot of you know made up words. So instead of saying the red circle, it's called a virus. Instead of the yellow circle, it's called a replicant. And if you can get those all straight, it really helps you draw you into the theme and helps the game make more sense too. And then the actions are all spelled out really nicely on our character sheet, and we've got a special ability. So there's nine characters in the game, they've each got a special ability. And it actually really changes your strategies for the game based on re which renegade you choose. Here we've got our command deck. So there's 15 cards in here, they're all basic. And here's the hack shack, where we can buy advanced cards to add to our deck. Now whenever we do that, we're gonna get rid of one of the basic cards out of our deck. So our deck will always contain exactly 15 cards. You will be rolling some dice in the in the game here. The, the black and red ones are used to determine when your viruses can defeat sparks or not. And then these two over here are used to determine the location when new sparks are spawned on the map. Okay, everything's set up, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we do is the intel phase. Uh, every good hacker needs to gain intelligence on their target before they just go out there and start hacking stuff. So what you want to do is you want to reread the special instructions on, on your current SMC, or you, the SMC you're fighting for this game. Uh, there are none because we're just playing the simulation. But you also need to take note down here, it's got a bronze, silver, and gold with a zero, one, and one marks. That's how many new sparks will be deployed at, during every turn during the deploying your sparks phase. So we need to pay attention to that. It's, you know, based on which countermeasure you're in. And then we got to reread, we got to read the goal on our countermeasure card. So here is the bronze countermeasure that we're currently up against. And it says here, goal, each renegade's home server and faith purple must have no sparks. Okay, so our home server is blue because we're Tilda Sweet, the blue character, so we're on the blue server. This is our home server, they call it. There's two sparks here. We need to get rid of those, and then Faith, the purple one, has one spark here. We need to get rid of that if we can, too. Uh, the goal will be checked later during the countermeasures phase after we've taken all three of our turns, and so we want that to be a success by the time we get there. 
All right, we would have drawn uh, five cards during setup, so let's get our starting hand of five cards out and see what we can do. All right, so these are called command cards. You play these to com gain command points, which you then use to take actions. So we're gonna try to um, do something with, about these sparks. I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna play Data Seal to gain one blue, which is called information. We're gonna gain one information command, which we can use to do a move action. So now we can move from one partition to another. When you do a move, uh, your avatar can carry a contaminant with it. It can actually carry up to three, but they have to all be the same color. So we could take the blue data node or the yellow replicant, but not both because they're different colors. We're gonna go ahead and move and carry this replicant with us. Now we've got two replicants here. Uh, what those are useful for is they can modify a spark and turn it into one of your uh, contaminants. But they have to outnumber the sparks to do it. We're two on two, so we can't do it. We need to get one of the sparks out of this out of this partition, so we're gonna play bypass. It gives us a cognition command, and cognition commands are used for an action called shift, and shift lets you push one of these circles from your partition out to another one. So we're gonna use shift to push this spark out here. All right, so now we do out, now our replicants do outnumber sparks two to one, so now we can play trickery master. So what you need to do to do a modify action is you need, you need to outnumber the sparks with your replicants, and then you need a deception command and you also need another command, um, and that's going to be the color that you mod that you turn the spark into. So we're gonna. This is a wild card. It's called leadership command, and we we can assign whatever value we want to it. We're gonna make it red. We're gonna make it a destruction command. That so now we're gonna use. We're gonna play this by discarding it, and we're gonna modify to transform. We're gonna delete this spark, and we're gonna turn it into a virus. Okay, and so now we want to bring this virus over here and attack these sparks with it. So we do that by moving, and we can carry it with us. So we're gonna play Decrypt. It gives us two information commands, and we're gonna move here, and we're gonna carry this virus with us. Now, that's only used one point of our two movement, and that's all right, the other, the other information command just gets wasted, it gets, you know, it's imaginary, it's gone, now that we didn't use it on that particular action. Now, we've got one card left, and we're just gonna hang on to it. At the end of your turn, you can hold on to up to one card to bring into your next turn with you. All right, so Replenish Hand Step is next. That's where we draw five cards. Every time you draw, it's always five cards. Your deck always has 15 cards. You always draw five. You always take three turns. Okay, so now we've got six cards. Um, end of turn step, there's no end of turn effects on any of the cards out or uh, you know the SMC or the Countermeasures card. All right, start of turn. Hack Shack is full already. We didn't buy anything from it. Um, new spark step, again, the SMC has zero new sparks for the bronze countermeasures, so we're back into the actions phase already. Now, Tilda's goal here is to, is to fight off these sparks using uh, an infect action, which is what the viruses do. She could have done it during her last turn using her infiltrate to gain two destruction commands, but she decided to wait until her next turn to see if she could draw cards to get more destruction commands, which will make it more likely that she's able to get rid of these sparks. So uh, she did draw one leadership command, but that's it. So she's going to go ahead and play two destruction from infiltrate. She's going to play data scan just for that leadership and call it another destruction. So we've got three destruction now. She's going to discard those. And then also she's got no more destruction, but you can discard three cards to gain one leadership command. So she's going to do that. And she's going to, of course, assign that last leadership command to also be a destruction. So now she's got four destruction points, four destruction commands, and she's going to use it to do an infect action in her current partition. So when you do infect, you have to roll the dice. All right, and then you do, you add up your total. So she's got one for one virus, and then four for her four destruction commands, and then one for the red die. So her total is one plus four plus one is six. And then you add up the, uh, the SMC's total here. They've got two sparks plus their die, which is five, which is a seven. You have to beat them. So even if they were only at six, we still would have lost. But we definitely lost. And when you lose... Uh, an infect action, you have to delete one virus. If you win your infect action, you get to delete all the sparks in that partition. But if you lose, you lose, you, de you delete one virus. All right, so now she's only got one card left. Uh, it's, it's worth two information. She's gonna hang on to it. She's got one more turn to go. So we're just gonna draw our next five cards, which is the rest of our deck, and see what we can do with our last turn. Okay, so turn three, we've got six cards left, and this is our last turn. We need to figure out how to get these sparks off of Faith, because that's our goal, is to have them off Faith and off our home server. All right, so because we're Tilda Sweet, and only because we're Tilda Sweet, her special ability is that she can carry a spark when she does her movements. So she's gonna play Decrypt for those information commands, and she gives her two information commands. She's only gonna use one to move down here, and she's gonna carry a spark with her. 
Now we're in a situation you saw before where the replicants outnumber the sparks and she's gonna do exactly what you think. She's gonna modify that spark. She's gonna play diversion. You need one uh, deception command to do it and you also need one command uh, to be what color you want to modify it into and we're just going to modify it into another deception That way we don't have to play another card to get another command because we've got two deception commands here So we're going to use one to do the modify action and then one to be the indicator that we're turning this spark into a replicant All right now we've got three replicants here. We still need to fight that last spark somehow though So we're going to try to get another virus out on the board another action you can do that we haven't seen yet is called upload so if you have three of the same color command we're going to get three destructions by assigning uh, this leadership to be a destruction and we're gonna play two cards uh, so we have three destruction commands and we're gonna use that to upload a virus into our current partition all right now we need to uh, well before before we bring that virus over to the spark actually we've got three replicants here so what we can do is we can actually install a replicator uh, that's the square token it's gonna be a, a, a more permanent a more useful thing to have on this partition. So what we need is we need three of the same color contaminants. We've got three replicants here, and then we need one of that color's commands also. So we can do that by assigning this leadership on this card to be a deception command. And we're gonna do that, play this. So now I've got one deception command, so we're gonna use that and our three replicants here We're gonna are gonna be deleted. And that's gonna let us install a replicator on this partition. And what that'll do for us is it'll make it so in order to upload a replicant here on this partition, we only have to play one deception command rather than the three it would usually require like you saw us do for the virus. Now we've only got one card left, it's a move. So we're gonna go ahead and use that uh, to bring the virus over here next to this spark. And that's all we've got, we're done. Um, we're out of cards, so we're gonna have to move on to the countermeasures phase. First thing that happens is virus battle. So, <clears throat> during the countermeasure phase, if there's any virus and spark, or virus and um, guardian, which is their black squares, sharing a partition, they have to duke it out. They cannot coexist. One of them has to die. So here, you don't get a chance to play any destruction commands. You just have to roll for it and see what happens. All right, we got a four, they got a two, so we had one to four, that's five. They had two to one, that's three. Five is greater than three, so we've removed this spark. Okay, good thing, good thing. Okay, next thing we see on our uh, sequence of play is delete contaminants. So if any, if any contaminants coexisted in a spot with a spark or a guardian, they would be deleted. And then we see delete installations. So if any installations, which are our square tokens, uh, were in the same partition as a, a black square, they would be deleted. Um, moves, okay, success or failure. So now we look <clears throat> at our uh, countermeasures card and we look at this goal again and we see if we have met the requirements. Each Renegade's home server and Faith have no sparks. So the blue server, no sparks. Faith, no sparks. Success. So you flip it over and they've got a side for fail and a side for success. We're going to do the side for success. It says add one virus to Faith partitions, one, two, and three. Add one uplink, the green circle, to each partition on Faith. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. All right, and then we uh, move sparks. Now this box sometimes would have colored arrows indicating how you're gonna move your sparks. We don't have any. And then we see scoring token step. So if you were successful on every bronze countermeasure for this SMC, then you get the bronze 25 VP token. Uh, this is used, you know, if you, if you finish the game, if you beat all the, if you beat the gold countermeasures phase without hitting the lose condition, then you've won the game. But if you just, if you want to play the same SMC multiple times and win over and over, you can add up your victory points to see how you're doing and compare it to your previous play. It's kind of a nice just little extra thing thrown in there on top of the win-lose condition. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the new deal step, which means we will shuffle our deck and redraw five cards. And then the Hack Shack Purge. So we would um, remove everything in the Hack Shack and refresh it with four brand new cards. But since we haven't even looked at the Hack Shack yet, I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. Uh, we'll bring it in later once we have the game down a little better so shuffle your deck draw the top five cards and then you go back to the intel phase so now we have to look at our silver countermeasure and see what our goal is now because it's updated so it says goal have at least one of every installation type that's red yellow blue and green on x servers where x is the number of renegades we have one renegade so we need one server to have a red yellow blue and green okay reset protocol all, all avatars teleport to their respective access points, then add one data port to each Renegade's access point. All right, so we're gonna teleport back here 
to our access point, which is space six on your home server. And we're gonna add a data port to it for free just because our countermeasures card told us to do that. Okay, so now we've got two installations here on our home server. So we're definitely gonna work on getting all the installations on our home server. So we need to get a green one and a red one in order to uh, fulfill this goal requirement. All right, next thing we do, we move into the command phase, start of turn, restock, hack shack. Okay, new spark step. Here we have to notice we're in the silver countermeasure now, and silver here on the SMC card has one dot. So we are gonna spawn one new spark. So we roll the spark dice, and we see the player icon and a six. That means the player icon means whatever server you're currently on, and six is obviously a number, so it goes here, right where we're standing. Now the major effect this spark has on me immediately is that right now I cannot install or upload anything into this partition because there's a spark there. All right, looking at my new five card hand here, I've got a good amount of cognition, um, a couple of destruction, one deception, and one information. So my goal is to get uh, these these uplinks down here into my home server so that I can do an install action to turn them into a neural hub because I need one of those. And I also need a propagator, which is the red one. So I need to get some of these viruses down here into my home server also because my goal is to have all four types of installations on a single server. So I need to get up there, but I only have one information command. Well, let me show you. I can actually play this for one information command. And because I am on a blue square, a data port, I can teleport now to anywhere in the map. And I'm gonna do it to right here. Um, I could do it to where I want to go, which is here, um, and that would cost me one movement point, but just to show you, because I went from a data port to a data node, that caused zero movement points, and I still had to have an information command just to do the move action, but I've spent zero movement points, so I still have one, so I can go ahead and execute that last movement point to move to here. And the reason I want to be here is because there's an uplink con contaminant here, and I'm going to use that in order to do all this shifting. Now, I've got uh, three cognitions here plus one leadership. I'm gonna turn it into a cognition. I'm gonna have four cognition commands at my disposal right now by discarding these two cards. And I'm gonna use those to do a lot of shifting. Now usually when you do a shift action, you can move with something out of your current um, partition. But since this is an uplink, I can use it to shift something from any other partition that also has an uplink, including shifting that uplink itself. So I'm gonna use that to remote shift this down to here. All right, that was one. And then I'm gonna shift this, that's just a regular shift, but I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna save this uplink here, to, that's two, and I'm gonna do another remote shift and move this uplink down here. And then I'm gonna do, for my fourth cognition command, I'm gonna do a regular shift and just put this uplink down here. Obviously now I've got three uplinks there, which is what I wanted. I can go install that when I have another um, cognition command at my disposal. But right now these are my only two cards left, so I don't have that. All right, so I've got uh, two uh, destruction or a single deception. What do I want to do with these? I really don't know. I really don't have anything I want to do with either of these right now, but I'm looking forward to my next turn, and I'm thinking I'm going to want some destruction commands because I'm going to need to upload another virus or bring one down from here, and then I'm going to need one also just to install a propagator out of those viruses. So I'm going to go ahead and just discard this, uh, this interrupt card and move on to my next turn. All right, so I do replenish hand set next. Let's draw five cards. So now I have a hand of six, and we have to do new sparks. So let's roll again to see where our one new spark comes out. All right, we got a purple one. So that's gonna go right here. Those contaminants are in danger. You know, well, the, there's a virus there to fight it at any rate. Um, we'll see, I don't think I need anything up there. So looking at my new hand, I only have one information command. I was really hoping to so I could move and drag these viruses with me. But you know what? I do have a leadership here. So I'm going to go ahead and use that leadership plus that information and, and assign it to be an information. So now I have two information commands to execute a move action. And I'm going to do one, two, and I'm going to carry these two viruses with me down into this partition. So I've got two viruses and three uplinks here. All right, I'm going to install. So I've got a uh, bypass card here, which gives me uh, one cognition command, and that's what I need. I need one cognition command plus three uplinks to go ahead and install a neural hub here in this spot. And we haven't seen a neural hub yet. What it's going to do, really cool. Remember how I did that remote move from uplink to up uplink? Well, since there's a neural hub in this partition, it means I can now do a remote shift on, or a remote any remote action on any partition in the, in the current server, as long as I'm on the partition with the neural hub there. So that could come in major handy later, lady, later, we'll see. We'll see, all right, now I need one more virus here, and I need, um, and I need to install a propagator, and I only have three cards left. 
right? I've got three destructions, so that's enough to spawn a virus, but then I won't have any destruction commands to install a propagator out of them. And, oh, you know what? I can use this to focus because I'm on a neural hub. Oh, no, that's not going to work. Okay, I had to pause the video because it actually took me a minute to figure this out. This game is very puzzly, and there is a way to do it. All you have to do is you have to use your leadership. So now you can have three cognition command, and you need three cognition command in order to do this the way I just figured out. You might figure out a different way to do it. I'm going to use three cognition command. I'm on the neural hub, so I can remote move from this uplink. I'm going to remote move the virus here. That's one. And then I'm going to remote move the uplink here. So now I can do my third cognition command to remote move the virus down to here. Now I've got three viruses on my current partition and I've still got destruction command left. So I'm going to play this card to get two destruction commands to do an install action to turn these three viruses into a propagator. There we go. And now I'm out of cards. Uh, so we go to replenish hand step. That doesn't apply. End of turn step. Here we go. SMC's revenge. Virus battle. So do we have any viruses on the same um, partition as sparks? Yes, we do right there. So they're going to duke it out. Remember, if you have cards left in your hand, you can't play any destruction here. You just have to roll for it and see what happens. Red two, black six. So the virus definitely won. That's going to, or sorry, the spark definitely won. <laughs> I keep thinking the viruses are the bad guys. The viruses are the good guys. All right, so the virus gets deleted. One virus gets deleted because we're, we're doing the virus battle. And then delete contaminants. So we still have a spark with a contaminant. So it's going to delete that contaminant and then a spark with a contaminant in the same partition. It's going to delete that contaminant also. So those go back to the supply. Uh, Delete installations. All right, my installations don't have any guardians in, in the same partition as them, so we're safe there. Now, success or failure. So check your countermeasures card here. Reread re the goal. Have at least one of every installation type on one server. Do I? Red, yellow, green, blue. Yes, I do. Okay, so we were successful. So flip it over. Read the success side. It says here, all avatars teleport to their respective access points, then add one spark to any partition of each Renegade's home server. So I'm going to teleport to my access point. I'm going to add a spark to a partition of my home server. I have no idea where. Let's just say um, right there. Now, if you, you, you might think if I put it here, it would be easier to take it out with just one infect action. That's true, but if I put it here and there's two sparks on here and then a third spark ends up getting placed there by the random new sparks phase, uh, that's going to turn into a guardian and then it would destroy my installation. It would just be bad news. So I'm going to set it out up there. Now move sparks. Here we actually see an example of move sparks. we got purple down, green up, red up, purple down. So we're going to go in purple. We're going to move all the sparks down one. So this is on one. So he's going to move down to six because it wraps around. And then green moves up. There's no sparks. Red moves up. There's no sparks. And then purple moves down. So it moves down from six to five. So now I've got a spark on five on faith over there. All right, so that's all that Move Sparks does. Scoring token, did I successfully complete every silver countermeasures? Yes. So I get this silver 25 victory point token. And end of game step, new deal, step, hack shack, purge. All right, again, we haven't even looked at the hack shack yet. I'm just going to leave it. So we do have to uh, shuffle my command deck and draw five new cards. All right, moving on to the gold countermeasures phase. Don't forget your intel step. You need to pick up this countermeasures card and read what your goal is. Otherwise, you'll be blind. All right, goal. Have at least one guardian or three sparks per renegade. There's one renegade on this card, body count. When a countermeasure, which is a black circle or a black square, is deleted, place it on this card. Okay, so now I need to go around and delete countermeasures. And when I do, they're going to come on this card. I need to delete at least three sparks. So it's... a Okay, so that must be why they had me put a, a spark on my home server. That makes sense. All right, so we've got a spark here, a spark here, and a spark here. All right, the first thing we're going to do, though, don't forget, is we do have to do uh, new sparks appear, which is going to be one. So let's roll for that. Hopefully it's somewhere close so I can go get it. Green six. Okay, that's not super useful. But look, there's a spark, spark, spark. They might be all close enough that, that we can do this. So we need to figure out how to delete these sparks. Uh, we've got two deception and information, two destruction, two information, and a cognition. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, hopefully you noticed um, I was not supposed to put a cognition token here. That was a spark token. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to try to use these installations I have because these 
can come in super powerful, right? So I'm gonna just uh, play one information command to go ahead and move over there so I can make use of, of these, this replicator and propagator and the neural hub, super useful stuff. All right, I'm gonna use uh, two, two deception commands to go ahead and upload to replicants because they only cost one deception command each now that there's a replicator here. And I'm gonna do the same thing uh, with my destruction commands for more viruses. I'm gonna upload two viruses because I have a propagator here that only takes two destruction commands. So I've got two viruses, two replicants. Now obviously these two replicants, I'm gonna to wanna to get them over to one of these viruses. I wonder which one I should go at first. You know what, I think I'm going to do bypass. I'm gonna play this cognition command. All right, that lets me do a shift. Now I'm gonna show you, I'm a, I've got a neural hub, so I can execute my shift from any partition on this server. I'm gonna execute it from right here and I'm gonna use it to shift this spark right here. Now the last card I have is Decrypt. It's got two information. I think I know what I wanna do with it, but I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, end my turn there and draw five cards because I can still do it on my next turn if I want to. So there's no reason to do it now. I'll, this will get me more information before I have to make that decision. Okay, and we do have a one new Sparks. So roll for that, we got a yellow five. So this time we're gonna grab that Sparks token and put it here, okay. So that's nice and close. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do just to make sure we get to see how it works is I'm gonna play focus for two cognition commands, but I'm not actually gonna use them um, the normal way. I'm gonna buy something out of the hack shack here. Over here you've got the cost, and you see it's got the two cognition symbols. So I can buy this card and go straight into my hand. Now you can play it for the command or you can use it to interrupt after any spark roll to instead change the face of one of the spark dice to whatever you desire. So I'm gonna hold on to that um, for, for my next turn. I think that's gonna be the card I hang on to so that when we hit that spark roll, I'll be able to put that spark where I want it. So I bought a card from the Hack Shack, so one of the cards that I used to buy it, which I only used one card, has to get deleted, which means removed from the game. That's because your deck has to always be exactly 15 cards. So now, in my hand here, I've got, I've got a lot of information, um, you know, and a few wilds. I don't know what to do with all this information. I think, I guess I can find a way to make it useful. I'm gonna play four information, give myself four move points, and just because I can, I'm gonna go one, two, and only because I'm told to sweet, I can pick up a spark and move it three, four. <laughs> I'm just gonna bring it right back here. So now you see I've got two replicants and one sparks. So replicants outnumber sparks, so I can modify it. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this and call this leadership a deception command. So I've got one deception and one information, so I can modify it into an in, into a, into a blue data node. So that spark is gone. Now instead of throwing it back in the stock, I'm sorry, I'm actually gonna put it, it's deleted, so it's going to go here on the countermeasures card. I need to get three sparks there, remember, all right? So now I've got the data node that it turned into right here. Okay, so I've got a lot going on in this partition, but that's fine as long as I don't have more than one installation of the same color, and the contaminants can only have a maximum of three of the same color, so I haven't violated either of those conditions. Uh, I'm gonna play data steal for one information, which gives me just one movement point, but that'll be plenty because I've got a lot of blue on the map right now. I'm gonna take these replicants with me, and I'm gonna do a move action. I'm gonna move to here. That costs zero movement points because it was from a data node to a, to a data port. And then I'm going to teleport to any place. I'm gonna to teleport to here. That costs zero movement because it was from a data port to a data node. And then I'm going to move to here. That costs one movement, which is how much I had. And so I carried these, uh, these replicants with me the whole way. Now, obviously, you can see what I'm doing. I'm outnumbering the sparks with my replicants, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a modify action. So I'm gonna call this leadership a deception command. So I've got deception and cognition, so that lets me modify this, uh, this spark, so it goes out on the countermeasures card and I get a cognition contaminant right here. Now I've got my only my ginger cool left, I'm gonna hang on to that. So replenish hand step, I draw my last five cards. Then uh, I get to do the uh, new sparks. Now don't forget that ginger cool I need to pay attention to. All right, green two, that's out here. That is not useful to me. What would be more useful, let's see, what do I have in my hand? 
I have cognition, or sorry, I have deception, so I could do another modify if I get enough move. I don't have any move. I've got three leadership, or two leadership if I use my ginger cool. Yeah, all right, I think, you know what? I've got a, I've got a plan in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and use my ginger cools or interrupt. That means I have to do that instead of playing it for command points because it says or. I'm gonna interrupt after any spark roll to instead change the face of one of the spark dice to whatever you desire. I'm gonna change this, this green side to a yellow side. So now it's gonna appear on yellow two. So the ginger cool goes in my discard pile and a new spark appears on the yellow two right there. All right, now the command action space. Okay, so now here we go. I get to show you my plan. I'm gonna play, now this might seem kind of wasteful, but I'm gonna play these two cards for the two leaderships that I'm going to assign both of them to be information because I didn't draw any information and I need the move. So those are both information. So now I have two movement points. I'm gonna take these replicants with me. One, two, over here to this spark that I just put here using my Ginger Cool's ability. And now I'd like to modify it, of course. So I'm gonna play interrupt for this one deception command and then I need something to modify it into. So I'm gonna play renegade apprentice for this one destruction command. So I play it, uh, a deception and a destruction command to do a modify. So this spark goes here on the countermeasures card and I get a virus in my current spot. All right, now I've still got one card left. Um, I don't really have anything to do with it. Doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, moving on to SMC's Revenge Step, virus battle. Are there any viruses and sparks occupying the same partitions? No, the only sparks are here. They're all alone. Okay. Uh, delete contaminations? No, there's no sparks in any partitions with contaminations. Uh, delete installations? No, there's no installations in any partitions with guardians. We actually never even saw a guardian come out. Success or failure? All right, check the countermeasures card, goal. Have at least one guardian or three sparks per renegade on this card. We did that. So we flip it over, we read the success side. Congratulations, prospect. You have beaten this simulation. Be sure to check your score and now graduate as a renegade. You are ready to face SMC Alpha Moby. Sweet, uh, we won and we can add up our score if we'd like to keep track of that or not. Either way, we won, although it was just a simulation so we didn't really save the world or anything. <laughs> to save the world, you actually have to beat Mother who is the hardest one, um, but on your way there, there's other SMCs that aren't quite as strong as Mother that you can battle. That's SDG Plays Renegade. I hope you enjoyed following along. Wow, this is a good game. Um, I can tell it was designed specifically for solo play. I have a lot of fun playing it solo. I haven't actually tried it cooperative, so I can't comment on it there. Now that was just the, uh, the training simulation. It gets much harder as you move into fighting the real SMCs. So what makes this game so good for me? Well, it's, it's the exploration. It's the coming up with new ways to do something. The rule book lays out all the rules for you, but it doesn't give away any of the secrets of how you have to combine those actions to solve the puzzles. This whole game, is it's always about looking at the board, looking at what you need to do, looking at your goal, and looking at what you have available and figuring out how to do it. There was a couple times while making this video that I was looking at what I had in the board and I was just like, I've got myself stuck. All right, because this video wasn't fake. Now the first, the, the bronze, the bronze phase, that was straight out of the rule book. That was the walkthrough. But the silver and gold phases, that was me actually drawing five random cards and figuring out how to beat it. And sometimes I thought it wasn't possible. But you just have to think about it harder, consider all your options, and figure out a way to do it. And there's so many ways to beat this game. And that's what makes it exciting, is, is you have to figure, is coming up with a new way, coming up with a new thing that you've never thought of before, and watching the combos unfold. So I'm giving this game an 8. Now know that it is very heavy. It takes a lot of focus to get through this rule book. I had to read the rule book. I read the rule book. It took me a long time because I had no idea what it was talking about. I read it all the way through. I played the walkthrough. I went back and read the rule book again. Now it made a lot more sense and I could pick out some of the more specific details because I understood what it was talking about. It, it was a process just learning how to play this game very heavy, very a, a multitude of options available to you and very puzzly, very thinky. During this video, um, it's gonna, I'm gonna have to go back and cut out my long thought processes because like I said, sometimes I thought I got myself stuck. And so it took me a while to figure out what I could do to keep the game moving. And if you get stuck, if you've got problems with analysis paralysis, there are so many options here. You're, you're just, the game's just gonna grind to a halt. You have to be able to just make a decision, do it, and, and hope it works out in the end, or be super smart and know exactly what you have in your deck. There's only 15 cards. I didn't do that. 
if I had known that going into my last turn, I would have had no movement available, I might have come, I might have done something different for my second to last turn. But I totally forgot that. Ended up working out because I sort of got myself in a bind and I just had to look at my cards and figure out what to do with it. I like playing like that. Um, not the smartest way to play, but it's exciting for me. Uh, so I love this game. Richard Wilkins, thank you so much for making this. I'm having a blast. I'll see you all next time.